So the final whistle has gone for Blackburn Rovers and their League One adventure. And now we can look forward to some championship football returning to Ewood Park next season. But until then, let's take a look back at the 2017-2018 season and break it apart and take a look at the numbers that made this such a successful season for the mighty blue and white. <laughs> So here we are, folks, with a special season review of Blackburn Rovers League One campaign. We're going to break it apart, look at the, the nitty-gritty, basically, the numbers that matter and the numbers that made us uh, finish second in the table and got us automatic promotion. Anyway, let's kick it off without no further ado with the final league table. Here it is, Rovers finishing second behind Wigan, which was enough to get automatic promotion. And we did have a really, really long promotion battle on our hands with Shrewsbury uh, really making, making this League One race very, very interesting because besides Shrewsbury, there is, what, nearly a 20-point gap between Blackburn and fourth place. So much credit goes to Shrewsbury. Their season is not over yet. They are in the playoffs. And I'd like to, to be honest with you, at the, at the four sides that have made the playoffs, I'd like to see Shrewsbury uh, seal the deal and get themselves over the line because they deserve it, to be honest with you. They led uh, the season for a huge portion of the calendar. You know, they, they deserve some sort of... Um, accolade to to reward them for such a, a decent season as for the bottom end of the table Oldham Northampton Milton Keynes and Berry will be playing league two football next season GB's Blackpool finishing in 12th probably my most uh, uh the surprise outfit for me was Plymouth unfortunately they didn't manage to get into the playoffs finishing seventh but they were rock bottom uh, around about Christmas time uh, other sides to disappoint, Bradford only finishing 11th this season. However, they got a new manager, Simon Grayson. Will he be in charge next season or will they, they switch a roo? Also, Portsmouth finished pretty decent in 8th. Uh, so a lot of sides um, who got promoted from League 2, Doncaster as well. Uh, not too bad, 15th position. So I think they all stayed up, uh, Blackpool, Doncaster, Portsmouth and Plymouth. So they'll be all playing League 1. Football next season. Anyway, let's take a look at the home form. Blackburn Rovers topped the home form, losing only two of their matches, gaining 51 points out of a possible something. I don't know what the possible something was, but uh, they got 51 points. Rotherham in second with 48 points, just three points shy, and Wigan are in third place with 47 points, uh, only winning 13 of their 23 matches. As for the bottom, Berry, Northampton, MK Dons, and Gillingham make up the bottom four, with Gillingham only winning five of their 23 home matches. As for the away matches, Wigan top the table uh, with 51 points. Rovers in there with 45. Shrewsbury in with 41. As for the bottom, Berry, MK Dons, all sort and south. And as for Gillingham, all the way up in eighth spot. So it's their away form that kept them in the division. Uh, GB's Blackpool right in the middle of the table with 13. So let's take a look back at the results for Blackburn Rovers. Now I'm going to go bring up these graphics in just one second. But if you do, if I go through these too fast, you can notice at the bottom of the screen there is a ticker tape thing going along there with the results. So uh, you can always check out the results there. But anyway, here we go. We opened up the season with back-to-back -back defeats. Uh, first against Southend United at their place before bringing it back to Ewood Park, losing 3-1 up against Doncaster. But then uh, we got our act together with four wins on the bounce. Bradford City, MK Dons, uh, Rochdale and Scunthorpe United. Then, then there was the shocker. There it is, the second defeat. AFC Wimbledon. Yep, they picked up a 1-0 win. Remember that game? Uh, it was all Rovers, one chance for Wimbledon, and they score. Then we uh, drew with Shrewsbury, which seemed a bit of a, a bit of a banana skin. Uh, then we took on Rotherham, Gillingham, and who else? We picked up we picked up a win against Rotherham and Gillingham. Then we lost to Ro Oldham, uh, drew with Plymouth before beating Portsmouth, drawing with Wigan, drawing with Fleetwood, uh, and then we went on a bit of an awesome spell, beating Berry, Oxford, Bristol Rovers, uh, Blackpool, Peterborough, Charlton. And then again, Northampton Town holding us uh, to a 1 1 draw before beating Rochdale, drawing with Scunthorpe, drawing with Rotherham. Uh, the, the game against Wimbledon was postponed, but then we got back to winning ways up against Shrewsbury, Fleetwood. Got drawn once again against Northampton Town. Walsall win. Plymouth Argyle, we lost. Uh, that ended up an uh, unbeaten run of, I don't know, was it like 18, 20 games? Then we drew with Oldham Athletic, beat Portsmouth, beat Berry, beat Walsall, beat Wimbledon. Drew with Wigan, beat GB's Blackpool again. Then it was the Beast from the East. 
uh, Gillingham. We went all the way down to uh, the, the Priestfield Stadium, only for the match to be cancelled. Bradford City win, MK Dons win, Southend United win. And this is when we start to really hit a purple patch. Took on Gillingham, 0-0 draw, Bristol Rovers 1-1 draw. But then we switched into top gear, 3-1 win over Peterborough. And then we sealed the deal, folks. Doncaster at the keep mode, 1-0. Charlie Mulgrew, floating header, uh, that got us promoted. Then... Banana skin, Charlton Athletic, 1-0 loss at the Valley before wrapping it up at Ewood Park. 2-1 winners. And that was the season, folks. Let's take a look at the overview for League One as a whole. There was 552 matches. There was 1,401 goals. And the average goals per game was about 2.54. Uh, the amount of home wins, 234. The amount of away wins, 169. As for draws, 149. Uh, games with less than three goals, there was 291. As for games with uh, three or more goals, we got 261. And the most common scoreline, you guessed it, a 1-1 draw. Now, let's take a look at the, st the team stats. Again, League One as a whole. Most goals scored, Wigan Athletic with 89 goals. Least goals scored, Berry 41 goals. Best defence. Ugh. Wigan Athletic, 29 goals. Worst defence, Northampton Town. They conceded 77 goals. As for the biggest wins, Wigan uh, picked up 12 victories. The most wins, Wigan, 29. Uh, least wins, Berry with 8. Most draws, Rochdale with 18. Least draws, Portsmouth with just 6. As for the most defeats, Berry had 26. Least defeats, now this is where it gets a little bit hairy. Least defeats. Wigan had six defeats. Unbeaten games. Blackburn Rovers, 18 games unbeaten. Most yellow cards. Oldham with 107 yellow cards. Most reds. Plymouth Argyle uh, got five reds. And Pompey had the most own goal scored with three. Now let's take a look at the player stats once again. League One as a whole. Top goal scorer, Jack Marriott. 27 goals. Most assists, Marcus Madison. 16 assists. Involved in goals, Jack Marriott was involved in 31 of the goals. Uh, basically, that's combining his assists and goals together. As for goals per game, Jack Marriott tops that stat with a 0.61 goal-to-game average. Most penalty scores, oh yeah, it's the skipper, Charlie Mulgrew, with five goals scored from penalties. It should have been six because he had one against Oxford, but he missed. As for most goals as a substitute, Connor Chaplin has got four for Pompey. As for the winning goal, Stephen Payne has five of those bad boys. Most doubles, Brett Pittman with seven doubles. Most hat-tricks, Tom Eaves had two hat-tricks this season. Most yellow cards, Matt Crooks with 15. Most double yellow cards, Matt Crooks with three double yellow cards. Most red cards, Lee Martin had two for the season. I think he's sticking Elliot Bennett for that bad boy too. Most minutes, John Guthrie with 4,144 Sorry, 4,140 minutes of football. Most used substitute, Leonard John Lewis for Shrewsbury Town. 34 games used as substitute. As for most goals conceded, Simon Eastwood has that unfortunate statistic with 66 goals. As for the referees, let's take a look at the referees. Most matches refereed is John Brooks. He got 24 uh, matches. Most yellow cards dished out was Charles Breakspear. He dished out 74 yellow cards. Average of uh, yellow cards per game, Jeremy Simpson. He averaged 5.5 yellow cards per game. As for the most red cards, Charles Breakspear once again with five red cards. Now, we've already seen the, the top goal scorer being Jack Marriott for the division, but let's take a look at the top, what was it, top 50 goal scorers in League One. Marcus Antonson right at the bottom there with uh, seven goals. He is number 50, and then you have a quick glance at the rest of them. Nelson, Nathan D'Alfonso's in there, ranked 30th with nine goals this season. Any other strange names in there? Jermaine Beckford uh, has got eight goals into the top, the top bunch now. Devante Cole got 10 goals this season. I'm sure most of them were for Fleetwood. Uh, Josh Morris is in there with 11. Ivan Tony, he was on loan with Wigan. Then he went to Scunthorpe. He's got 12 goals. Then we have Charlie Mulgrew in uh, ninth place, joint. Uh, he's got 14 goals for Rovers. Once again, should have been 15 with that penalty. And according to this, it's the same statistic as Danny Graham uh, with 14 goals. Then we went to the top 10. Graham Carey's in there. Plymouth, 14 goals. Nick Powell's got 15 goals. Ewan Doyle with, uh, from Oldham's got 15 goals. Utsimer from Walsall's got 16. Eves has got 17. For Gillingham, Will Griggs got 19. Bradley Dex got 19. Pittman has 23. And there he is, Jack Marriott. Anyway, that's, that's a good statistic. But what about the most goals scored by defender? Way. No problems there. Charlie Mulgrew pissing all over the competition. Uh, look at that. Charles, or whatever his name is, Dunkley or Chuck, Chucky Dunkley. I don't know what his name is. He only got seven. Pfft. Come on, get some time in, Paul Cook. 
Anyway, let's take a look at Blackburn Rovers season as a whole. 59 games in all competitions, and we won 35 of them, 14 draws and 10 losses. So basically, 59% of our matches resulted in a victory. As for the amount of goals scored, we scored 105 goals in all competitions, which averages 1.78 goals per game. As for conceding goals, we conceded 52 goals in all competitions, which equals 0.88 goals per game. 83% of games, uh, in 83% of our games, we've scored a goal. In 64% of our games, we did not concede a goal. Uh, our longest winning streak was four games. Our season record without a win, how many games did we go without a win, was three. How many games did we go uh, without, or how many games did we lose back-to-back, uh, -back? and that is two. And how many games did we win, uh, or how many games were we unbeaten? And that is a 18 for the season. So let's take a look at some of the other statistics here now. The largest attendance, no question there, was the last match of the season. Blackburn Rovers up against Oxford United with 27,600 odd folk turning up. And a lot of them ended up on the pitch with that stupid uh, pitch invasion. As for the lowest attendance, only 10,011 folks turned up. For the matchup against Plymouth. Now, most go, uh, home goals scored, and that was the 4 1 victory for Rovers over MK Dons. And the largest margin of victory was the same result. Uh, as for the most away goals uh, for Blackburn Rovers, was the 4 2 victory over Oxford United at their place. And our largest defeat was the 3 1 home loss to Doncaster Rovers. Now, how about this? The average attendance for Rovers this season 12,832 uh, people. As for the total attendance this whole season, 295,146 people within the gates at Ewood Park. As for the longest winning streak, six games. Longest losing streak, two games. Longest unbeaten games, we already mentioned it, 18 games. And again, we already mentioned it, longest winning winless streak is two games. Now, let's take a look at Blackburn Rovers only now here with some goal scoring statistics. Obviously, Bradley Lack. Uh, Tops Pops, 18 goals. Mulgrew's there in second with 14. Graham's in there with 14. Armstrong's in there in fourth spot with nine. Ox at Marcus Anderson is in fifth spot with seven. Dominic Samuel with five. Elliot Bennett with two. Not all two. Richard Smallwood, two. And Craig Conway has two. How about the assist? Bradley Dack is the man creating all the, all the stuff. Eight assists for him. Danny Graham's also got eight. Derek Williams with five assists. Elliot Bennett with four. Mulgrew with four. Antonson with three. Jack Payne has three. Guess what? Jack Payne had a combined, I think, a combined assist tally of 12 assists. Yeah? So, it's not bad. It's not a bad season return. Or well, only three of them were with Blackburn Rovers. Now, if you're still on the Jack Payne bandwagon, you gotta, you got to give me some, you got to give me more information than that. Anyway, uh, Richard Smallwood has three assists. Chapman has three. Armstrong has two. How about the discipline? Richard Smallwood had 11 yellow cards. Not a red in sight, but 11 yellows. Elliot Bennett had five yellows, one red. Bradley Dack had seven yellows. Corey Evans had six. Uh, Derek Williams had six. Samuel had three yellows, one red. Downing had five yellows. Morgan had five. Naomi had five. And Dara Lenahan had four. So here we are, folks, with the Blackburn Rovers squad and their statistics. Uh, grand overview, amount of games played, goal scores, yellow cards, red cards, all that kind of good stuff. So you can have a quick glance at those numbers. But I'm going to go over these uh, players one by one in their own special player rating uh, video and they're going to be coming up every single day until I complete all 22, 23 of them. So uh, check back for those bad boys. Moving forward, basically uh, we're going to take a look here at the amount of goals scored uh, for each of the top six. Look at that. Wigan do top the pops with 88 goals. Rovers there in second with 80 goals. In third is Rotherham with 70. This is third out of the six. Third is Rotherham with 72 goals. The average uh, for Wigan is 1.96 goal per game, 1.78 for Rovers. As we kick on, shots percentage. Blackburn Rovers had a total of 533 shots this season. 220 of those were on target. 80 of those resulted in a goal. So that's a basic that's a, a percentage of 41% of their shots were on target. And 15% of those ended up in the back of the net. As for the opposition, uh, Blackburn Rovers uh, were on the back of 425 shots. 154 of those were on target. 39 of those were in goal. Uh, so 36% of the shots received by Blackburn Rovers ended up in uh, on target. And 9% of those shots uh, ended up in the back of the net. Woo! Uh, obviously, you can. I'll leave this on for just a couple of seconds so you have a quick uh, overview of the other top six sides there in their statistics. Then we're going to kick it down below here. Uh, Blackburn Rovers averaged um, 11 shots per game uh, and it also averaged 4.89 shots on target and they also averaged 1.78 goals per game. 
So again, that's the second table there. Again, I'll let you. I'll leave that up there for one second. You can pause this and take a little look uh, for yourself. The team of the season. That's right. Let's take a look at the team of the season. I did cover this in the uh, special awards video, which already out. Byron Goal, Lenehan, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Smallwood, Evans, Bennett, Armstrong, Dak. And Graham, here they are. That is my Blackburn Rovers team of the season. Uh, if I've missed somebody or you think that I should reconsider, again, whack your opinions in the comment section below. Now, moving on, uh, Cast the Cat has been predicting Blackburn Rovers uh, League One football throughout the whole season. That's right. We're going to have a quick uh, look back at her uh, predictions here. So... All in all, Blackburn Rovers played 46 matches. There were 12 draws amongst those 46 matches. So basically, there was 34 results that Cast the Cat could have predicted right or wrong. And she got 18 of those correct, which, a bit, bit of quick maths for you, uh, and that is a 53% uh, predictions success rate for Cast the Cat. So fair play to her. Uh, she hopefully she should be back next season as uh, we return to the championship with some more of her football predictions, folks. Now, also uh, a bit, little bit of social media for you. Not much going on right there. A lot of people still talking about the old uh, pitch invasions and all that kind of junk. I'm not going to cover that whatsoever. Just a quick couple of little snippets. Adam Armstrong was uh, on Twitter and he posted this. What a great way to end the season. Promotion with these boys has been amazing. Thank you to the players, staff, and the fans for everything. Uh, Robert. So good luck to you, Adam Armstrong. I hope to see you again in a blue and white jersey next season for Blackburn Rovers. How about this guy? Another lone knee, Harry Chapman. Promotion. Heart, heart. Great to be involved with such a great bunch of lads. Disappointing season for me on a personal note, but this makes it all worth it. Big thank you to Rovers fans for sticking by me and showing me huge love and support. It's been an unforgettable season. Again, I really, really would like to see you back in a blue and white jersey next season, Chappers. As for this puppy, uh, the owners, or, or, or maybe not. But there was a statement released by Blackburn Rovers uh, shortly after the uh, final whistle against Oxford United. And here it is. I'm going to give it, I'm going to read it for you. So that uh, statement was, was this. We would like to take this opportunity to put on record our immense pride at the success of the club this season, both on and off the pitch. Firstly, many congratulations to Tony Moby, the first team squad staff, on achieving the objection of promotion back to the championship the first time, uh, first attempt. Tony's hard work, integrity and passion for the game has created a strong bond with the supporters, which is great to see. And he will get our full support as we prepare for the challenges of championship football. Open up the bank, Venkies. Uh, the players deserve great credit for their focus and dedication approach throughout what has been a long and testing season. Their efforts on the pitch have been matched by the phenomenal support, particularly away from home, from the stands. We can assure the fans that their loyal and fantastic support is greatly appreciated and has not gone unnoticed. So we thank you for it. Uh, the club is now more united on and off the pitch than it ever has been. And it is vitally important that we continue this momentum and unity into the championship. We'd also like to congratulate Dam Damian Johnson, David Dunn and the Under-23 team on the title-winning season, as well as Gemma Donnelly and the Rovers ladies team on their continued success in the league and cup competitions. The club was also named Family Club of the Year at the EFL Awards, as well as Northwest Community Club of the Year. And we'd like to give a special mention to those working behind the scenes for their tireless efforts in ensuring that we remain a celebrated club in these areas. Finally, we hope to see you all back at Ewa Park in August for the start of what we hope to be an exciting and successful season. Uh, so, yes, that was the uh, official um, statement from the owners. So the gaffer, Tony Moby, has been talking. This is what he said shortly after the final whistle in an extended Talking Heads. Yeah, delighted that we won the game. Delighted for the people who came. It was that's a real eye-opener for me. I can't stress how proud I am to be the manager of a club with, with a sort of fan base, a support like that. I know, it's, you know the evidence of that wasn't really there throughout the season, but... Um, if that's what we can achieve, if that's where we can get to with the supporters, um, you know, it's, it shows it's a Premier League club in waiting, really, and uh, we have to try and give them a team on the pitch to to keep them coming out and keep supporting the club and the town and be proud to be from this area. And, um, you know, collectively, that's how football clubs can do it. You get a group of players who fight for every tackle and every ball, but you have a fan base that stick with them because they understand that you... Everything's not rosy all the time. You're going to lose the odd game. You're going to lose goals. It's um, 
and they were great to deal. They stuck with the team right to the end and uh, delighted for everybody that it finished well. Listen, I, we should say that Wigan have been a great team this year as well, with some great players and, and, and a top manager. And um, so, congratulations to them. Our aim was to get promoted out of this league, and um, we just like 96 points would normally win any league, but um, we're, we're happy enough, content enough, and, and as I say, congratulations to Wigan. Yeah, I think so. I think. Um, we had to keep driving to be honest because Shrewsbury Town were there on our heels all the way and uh, kept pushing us and um, there's pleasing stats for me of the fact that you know if we look at the league table after 11 games and you look at the league table at the end how many points we've taken off Wigan how many points we've taken off Shrewsbury you know and the rest are left in the distance really but um, and you could argue I've been on the I've been on the other end where my teams haven't had the biggest budgets and and, and um, it's very difficult and it's easy to say the teams with the most money will, will win the league and um, what, what I do know is it's difficult. Nobody makes it easy. Like today, Oxford came and give a really good account of themselves. And um, and yes, we'll have, if not the biggest budget, one of the biggest budgets in this this league, but you still have to do it. You still have to go on the pitch and do it. And and if you think back to that first home game against Doncaster and you know how amazingly frustrating it was for the supporters and how difficult it was for the players and um, we had to rally and you know huge credit to them for doing just that and sticking together through through a really difficult time early season and here we are you know nine and a half months later um, celebrating a promotion we should be very proud of the team and uh, and look forward to a, a busy summer and, and hopefully adding some quality to, to the existing you know players we've got yeah I think so I think that and listen, it's great that the substitute can come off the bench and not be sulking because he's on the bench, but come off the bench and want to show you what he can do, and, um, and that's what we've got this year. Generally, it's you know players who who um, understand they're part of a, a group of maybe 22 footballers, and I can only start with 11, and I can only stick seven on the bench, and um, but they've all been really supportive. I haven't had any issues really, and. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really, really proud of them. They should be proud of themselves. Their family should be proud of the players who do, who uh, got the job done for this club this year. Um, as a manager, I, I genuinely feel I'll be driving home and thinking about recruitment for next season. And um, as you see, you know, I, I, I talk about my family a lot because my family, you know, family and football is what my life's about. And um, my boys, I want to go and play footy in the garden with them. And um, and I'm pretty sure now the youngest one anyway will want to be Danny Graham or Bradley Dack in the garden, you know, rather than he always wanted to be, um, you know, I don't know, Chelsea player Hazard generally he wants to be, but um, let's hope he's thinking he's Bradley Dack these days. To be honest, I do a bit of that, to be honest. <laughs> I do, uh, I, well, particularly my young one who's, who's quite small, he's, uh, he's very nippy though, and just trying to get him used to bigger players wanting to crunch him as he gets older in life he, uh, he can stick it through my legs and uh, he's, he can score a goal but as a good day as I'm here I am talking about family because it's it's what's important to me you know hopefully this club feels like a family and um, you know yourself who work in the media department the people who, who sell the tickets the people in the club shop the people who cook the food you know they're all hopefully all happy today we're all one club and we need to move forward together you know, if you know, one Rovers was, was something that I'd, I'd seen written, and uh, I think it's important, and we all have to work hard to make that happen. So, folks, yes, that will wrap up this season, and it's been an exciting one uh, for me. I've enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, based stateside, can't really go to Ewood Park uh, that much. Obviously, when we do go back to the UK, we try to make at least one or two visits to catch Rovers, whether it's home or away. Uh, but I've been watching every single match on iFollow and uh, that has been a pleasure to catch both away and home games uh, for the Mighty Blue and White and I've enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to the championship season. Hopefully iFollow will improve a little bit. There are some areas that are a little bit hinky, but uh, I've enjoyed it all the same. Anyway, there is a lot more Blackburn Rovers content still to come on this channel before the new season even kicks into gear. So make sure you check back. As like I said earlier, I'm going to be doing player reviews. I'm going to be doing my 2017-2018 end of season buy keep or sell so we look back at the whole uh the whole squad and uh decide do we want to keep them do we want to kick them onwards uh, and maybe chucking a few suggestions about who we're gonna bring and also maybe in a little bit later on maybe june july we'll do a 2018 2019 league predictions for blackburn rovers and also got a couple of blackburn rovers football manager specials coming out uh this is very interesting and you might want to check it out i'm hoping to get it online um probably tomorrow 
uh, when this goes out the day after the day after this the, the day that this goes out will be the first one and that is we're going to simulate the 2017 2018 season but we're going to each video we're going to be doing a, a Blackburn Rovers manager from the past so the first one will be Owen Coyle then we're going to go back a, another another manager to Paul Lambert then we're going to go back another manager to Gary Bowyer and just simulate the whole season see how Blackburn Rovers have fared with uh, a uh, a Blackburn Rovers manager from the past. And we go all the way back to King Kenny and see what he can do with the 2017-2018 Rovers. Mighty blue and white Blackburn Rovers. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this season review, give it a thumbs up. If you've enjoyed the channel, just give this a cheeky thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Also, moving forward, I am going to be switching gears a little bit to the World Cup. And I am doing something really special. Uh, so I hope you can come back and watch that. Uh, you, you can come there with your unbiased hat. You can take your Blackburn Rovers hat, put on your international hat, and sit back and watch the watch the madness, the madness un unravel with the World Cup action. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. Thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.